Hello and welcome to a brand new edition of Inside Out on the Road, a show where we'll focus on individual stocks with in-depth analysis, deep dive into the financials and tell you about the key risks and triggers going forward. So let's not waste any time on the show and get to our first stock today. My colleague Nigel travelled to Jaipur to get chatting with the management of Sri Cement and gets us this very special deep dive. Well, the cement industry has caught everyone's imagination. So inside out, on the road, well, we decided to visit Jaipur. And we're currently at Sri Cement's Biovar unit, which incidentally is their first unit that they commissioned many, many years back. Well, Sri Cement, in terms of a stock price, in the last one month or so, it's been an outperformer. Last one year, it's been a relative underperformer. But that doesn't take away from the fact that they've created big wealth for shareholders in the last one to around two decades or thereabouts. Well, on the capacity addition front, they moved from around 4 million tons towards 50 million tons, and now they're headed towards 80 million tons. That's the target that they have on their mind for by 2030 or so. What's more important is they have been growing at a faster rate in comparison to the industry, and they've been adding capacity at a lower than expected cost on a per ton basis. In terms of their geographic sales breakup, bulk of their sales are in North India, followed by East India, and then it's distributed you know, to the remaining of the country, which is a rather small portion as of now. Now, Sri Cement enjoyed peak valuations. Why is that? As I told you earlier, they added capacity at lower capex in comparison to the industry, and they've also been pioneers on the cost side of things with regard to implementation of WHRS, with regard to usage of pet coke, and also the split grinding model. The problem now is they can't add more WHRS, and some of their peers, they're catching up and bridging the cost gap as well. So from more than 1,000 rupees per ton on a unitary cost advantage, that's come down to nearly around half of that. And Sri Cement's EBITDA per ton, which was nearly around 1,500 rupees per ton, well, that's gradually started drifting lower. And now some part of the street believes that Ultratech Cement's EBITDA per ton will overtake that of Sri Cement. ACC Nambuja as well with the new promoter, well, they're likely to play catch up on the EBITDA per ton front. The other question that the street wants to know is whether or not these peak valuations, well, they can be maintained and will they be justified? Another aspect the street is waiting by for is how are they going to utilize cash? Remember, they raised a QIP uh, to the tune of close to 2,400 crore rupees or thereabouts, but utilization really hasn't been up to the mark. They're sitting on a cash balance of close to around $1 billion approximately, and the street is waiting by to see whether or not they're going to pursue some inorganic growth. So clarity on that aspect is something that we'll be looking forward to because their return ratios have got diluted. To answer all of these questions, well, we're getting chatting with the management of Sri Cement. Mr. Bangur is waiting for us. Well, Mr. Bangur, you know, the stock market believes that things are going to look up for the India cement story from year on, particularly the second half of the year. They believe that demand is going to be strong, volumes will spike up, pricing will move up as well, and input costs will cool off. Are you in that camp? Ah, so many factors. We may be agreeing to some, something may not be agreeable, but the bottom line will definitely inflate. The point is the profitability. That has to go up. All right, so you're, you're in the camp that believes that, yes, India's cement's demand story is in a sweet spot, and we'll take that. Yeah. But if you, could you put a number to it? For the next couple of years, say for FY23, yeah. what kind of a demand growth should, should the cement industry see? And maybe if you could forecast FY24 as well, because we'll be getting into yet another election year. Uh, 8 to 10% CAGR here hmm. for 3 to 4 years is what is, I will say. Okay, all right. So 8 to 10% growth for the next 3 to 4 years is what you're seeing. What about for your own company? Historically, you have grown at 1.4, 1.5 times odd. If I look at it over a longer time horizon, mm. do you continue to outpace the industry growth? Is that what you believe? As the industry, I expect to grow at 8 to 9, 8 to 10%. I should grow at 10 to 12% to 
make both the equations right. You know, normally Shri Cement was always the leader, whether it was with regard to pet coke usage, whether it was with regard to waste heat recovery system as well. You all were always first. Now the industry seems to be catching up. What are the levers that you have in place, you know, to, uh, to hold on to that leadership on the cost side particularly? Now we are going for more and more solar and wind power. You know, renewable as a percentage of your power usage, how much is it currently? I believe that the WHRS, for the current capacity, you're almost at the tilt. You know, so you can't really expand for the current capacity, WHRS systems. For your expansions, you can do that. Uh. So as a percentage of your total power mix, what is it currently and uh, where do you see that number headed? WHRS and uh, renewables put together, it will be around 55%. Well, Mr. Bangur, we can see that you're constantly focusing on the solar side and the renewable side of things as well, as you mentioned. But the point that the stock market wants to know is, you have been the leader on an EBITDA per ton basis. You know, at one point of time, even if it was for a few quarters, you were doing 1,500 rupees per ton. That number has come down to around 1,200 rupees per ton. And some of your competition, you know, the gap that you had with the Altotex of the world, ACC Ambuja Cements as well, that's likely to narrow a little bit. What's the steady state EBITDA per ton you're looking at? Keeping in mind, volumes are going to pick up. Uh, you know, you have costs that are cooling off as well. And your focus on the renewable side and the cost saving side. Ultimately, the product, when we started the unit, the EBITDA of 300 to 400 was very good. But continuously inflation in the putting up of the plant is there. So the new plants which are put up will not survive below 1500. So in a very short time, you will say 1,500 to 2,000 rupees EBITDA mm. in three years' time. That will be norm. Old norms of 400 to 600, 600 to 1,000, and then continued up to 1,200. The 1,500 was also a uh, abnormality. Mm. And 800, 900 also is an abnormality. Mm. So it has to be about 1,200 to 1,500 now, and in three years' time, 1,500 to 2,000. But Mr. Bangur, you have been the leader on the EBITDA per ton basis. So irrespective of what happens with the industry, you know, that numbers that are giving us 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, you know, that could, uh, uh, you know, that could be a rather a movable uh, factor. Right. But will you continue to remain the leader on the EBITDA per ton basis? What is your belief? You have been the leader for the last few years. Can you hold on to that number one uh, position? Uh, not very sure, but now, we will be one of the first two or three. You know, Mr. Banguria mentioned competition a couple of times, and I'll get to the consolidation bit in just a bit. But there is likely to be, you know, a churn at the top level managements. You have a new player coming in in terms of Adani, and there could be a lot of talent that's on offer. Are you looking at strengthening your, your team, you know, your core committee that you have? Is that something that you've already started discussions with? I'll tell you what. We pick up, uh, you know, a lot of viewers that maybe, in fact, Shri Cement is looking at a top-level rejig, and there is some of that talent that's already in conversation with you. Your take? We are definitely in discussions yeah. uh, from many companies, right? And uh, we'll come out with a very powerful team. As of now, we already have, uh, you know, a bit of a roadmap. Uh -huh. You're at, uh, you know, around 45, 47 million tons odd. You'll be moving to around, say, 56, 57 million tons in the next two to three years. But your target is 80 million tons. So what is the preferred area you want to go to? North and East is something that you've already, uh, you know, been in for quite a long time. You've moved little to the South. So what would be the targeted geography you're looking at? And also earlier you were building rather than buying. Do you want to change that strategy now? Maybe Sri Cement looks at more buying than building? No, Sri Cement will always be interested in building. We have two or three mines at various stages of clearance, mm. various stages of land clearing. So we don't normally announce much before the thing really happens. Mm. So those will come up in north and south. Mm. Uh, east, we have already got enough capacity. Right. So north also capacity will be needed. Right. Uh, the industry capacity utilization in north is very high. Right. So at south, we have low presence, but the industry capacity is low, but still we will come in south. So north and south we are looking at. North and south. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, what about Central India? Central India, unfortunately, doesn't have much limestone. There we have to have a buy. Okay. There the 
build cannot work okay so are you in talks with anyone to buy any central uh, asset you know any any cement manufacturer uh, in, in the sense uh, that is not for the interview if we are in talk still we will not be in talk <laughs> so. but, but mr bangur i need to probe you a little bit more uh, so out of this added capacity that's coming on stream you're saying you're looking at south clearly you want to hold on to that dominance that you have in north india as well uh, and central india since limestone is an issue if you have to expand out there then you'll be looking at some inorganic right. are we getting that correct exactly correct now we are little more aggressive in our approach yeah. compared to the past compared yeah. to the past uh, we are now ready for depending on the location somewhere between 100 to 120 dollar would be a good acquisition there are plenty of uh, assets sir in that range i have seen assets at 60 70 dollars as no, well which are listed on the stock exchange right now there are the stock exchange prices but once you want to have a controlling interest the prices changes dramatically have you tried uh it changes that we have seen most of the places okay. where the stocks are not well discovered the MACC Ambuja Ultra Tech free the prices are well discovered mm. there cannot be much uptake mm. there are many small companies of 60 to 70 yeah where you are saying they are underpriced on the market today right so once somebody wants to look at them suddenly the price will increase the prices have to be reasonable right you know in the past uh, you have been an investor as well in various companies and the stock market gets very excited when they see mr bangur's name coming up in any cement company but you have said that this is a financial investment that i've made like orient cement yeah. before we get to shri cement on the lookout personally i mean any any of those companies are looking good from an analyst perspective analyst perspective they have to work but uh, i feel uh, less than 60 dollars is one thing including the loan on them yeah. if the enterprise value is less than 60 dollars per share yeah it is or per ton it is a very good buy but you may have to wait yeah. or may not have to wait for 2 years or so which is a minimum in the investment world Well, Mr. Bangur, we have got your investment thesis and your investment philosophy, but the stock market will really be wanting to know a couple of aspects. There's been so much of rumors, a lot of buzz as well about inorganic growth. So let's ask you point blank: any discussions with India Cement or Sanghi Industries? Ah, uh, not that of any use. Ah, uh, not of um, much purpose. Ah, uh, small discussions. from the not directly you asking at that time both of them were not interested okay. so we never pushed them okay but there has been no further conversations with regard to shri cement going ahead and maybe buying out india cement and sanghi industries and the only reason sir we are asking you this is because the stock market is a buzz so you said that there was a bit of an approach but they weren't willing to sell is that are we getting it correct yes you are getting it correct but that uh, Was just asking them, are you in the market to sell? They said we are not in the market, and there the matter ended. So it was not that I want to buy was never the word. Okay, all right, that's a big clarification that's coming in there. So you believe as of now both those two are not on the block? Uh, at that time, that was some time back. So whether they will be ready to sell or not, because there is no point in any unit where. you take a bid from the market do some here there if the present promoter is not willing to sell no use looking at that asset but if they are willing to sell are you a ready buyer we will that's why we are uh, uh, we are a possible buyer ready means uh, we don't know what the price is and then readiness cannot be there without price okay all right that's a fair clarification what about prism cement There was some other buzz about that Prism Cement or any other company that you all could already be in conversation with. No, no, there, there, there are a lot of things are the stock market buzz. Right. Because Prism Cement, they are doing well. They are a growth-oriented group. Uh, to think that they will sell, uh -huh. not there. No, nobody said that uh, they are selling. All right, uh, but are you in conversation with any other unit? Uh, you know, you're in India, and if you're in conversation, you know, if you're looking at a target, what is the 
size you're looking at. Are you looking at at least 5 million tons? Are you looking at 8 million tons? Are you looking at a bigger number? No, you must be having a targeted capacity. The, in the mind targeted again. capacity is not the point. Point is, we are looking anything between uh, 1 million to 10 million, depending on the limestone what they have. Mm. If the limestone is high, capacity is 1 million, doesn't matter. Mm. It can be any time increased. So we are looking at the limestone size. It should be at least about 100 million ton of limestone. Okay. Which should be available, and uh, then the capacity doesn't matter. So as of now, you're saying that sea cement is not an active conversation as of now, but you're on the prowl. Yes, that is the right word. Let me flip the question. Suppose you get an offer to be bought out. I mean, I'm sure you never thought of it, but uh, what if that happens? Till we are able to add value, there is no point selling. So, uh, till now the market is having a faith on us, we are doing well. And not that people will definitely put offer, hmm. but we are not in the market as yet. All right, uh, you know, you're sitting on a big cash balance, plus you're generating operating, operating cash flow as well. Hmm. Now, you're sitting on close to around a billion dollars of cash hmm. in your books. Hmm. The street would be happy, you know, and as you said, stock market puts a lot of faith on you. If you pay out, say, a one-time big dividend or return the money in some way to the shareholders rather than sitting on it, that's provided there's no inorganic growth. So have you, I mean, is that a plan to distribute some of that cash? And I ask you this, Mr. Bangur, because you would know it better than me, that your return ratios are getting diluted. I appreciate it, but as we have the interest to take over the units, have an inorganic growth, that's why we are keeping the cash. And uh, this is necessary, otherwise you lose options. So we will be keeping it. Dividend can be little bit uh, better or not, but that is not going to dilute us substantially. Okay. As far as the growth, with what we are generating, little bit more or almost equal, yeah. we are investing continuously for our present growth. Right. But Definitely in a year or two, somewhere part of this money will be used. That will be interesting because otherwise you have been, uh, you know, there in the market, but you have not really been very aggressive on the buying front. But as you said, now you're keeping your ammunition ready. And if there is a chance, you're set to fire. Right, right, you are. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, Mr. Bangur. Thanks so much for speaking to us here on CNBC TV 18. Wishing you all the best with your plans. Thank you, sir. All right, that was an interesting deep dive into Sri Simen. But time to slip into a short break. We'll come back with another interesting stock. JK Paper is in the spotlight on the other side. Stay tuned. <laughs>